Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. I hope you're all really well and you're having a good week. I'm here today to share with you something really exciting. Today I'm going to be talking all about the Frugal Frocks 2021 challenge and I'm going to be talking all about how you can get involved and what's going to happen and what the rules are for the challenge and what I'm hoping to say for the challenge and I'm also hoping that you might help me to choose what you think I should make. So before I get started, if you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing and making fabric hauls, sewing plans, things I've made, sew along sometimes as well. And I would love you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. I also just do the usual and tell you what I'm wearing this morning. So today it's quite chilly outside, even though it's now March. Um, I'm actually wearing one of my super cosy linden sweatshirts and it's in this really lovely grey animal print um, sweatshirt design which is really fleecy on the inside so I love this one and I always get it out on chilly days so it's perfect for this morning. So what is the Frugal Frocks Challenge you might be thinking to yourself? Well the Frugal Frocks Challenge is a challenge which has been organised by two ladies, Ruan from Yorkshire Sogirl and Sam from Frugalissima. Um, it's mainly an Instagram based challenge but don't worry if you aren't on Instagram you can still very much take part. You don't have to be on social media, you don't have to be someone that posts on social media, you can just take part just for the fun of it. So I will tag both Sam and Ruin's accounts below um, on Instagram and they both also have YouTube channels as well. I will tag their YouTube channels below as well so that you can pop over and follow them and subscribe to their channels if you haven't already. So the idea behind this challenge is that um, you pick a free sewing pattern and obviously it's titled frugal frock so it needs to be a dress pattern, a frock, a dress pattern. Um, so a free dress sewing pattern and then you choose some fabric that you already have in your stash and you make up a dress using a free sewing pattern, it could be a free sewing pattern that you found online or a free pattern that you've been given or a pattern that you've got from a magazine or something like that um, and then you choose a suitable fabric from your stash and you pair the pattern and fabric from your stash together and make a dress uh, with minimal cost. It's a really good way to use up all of those free patterns that you might already have at home. It's a good way to find lots of the free resources that there are out there online and also of course it's a good way of using up your fabrics that you might have had laying around for a long time in your stash. So lots of us sewing YouTubers have come together to post a video per day from around the middle of February I think and right on into March just sharing a little bit about what we're going to be making for the challenge. Um, sharing our ideas and how you can get involved and I'm just going to pop in an image now just listing all of the YouTubers that are involved and the dates that they would have posted their videos just so that you can pop over and watch those videos if you'd like to too. So do feel free to pause the video here and just zoom in if you'd like to see the list of everyone taking part. So as you can see there's a lot of us getting involved um, and the idea is that one vlogger will post a video every day. So yesterday's video was Kath over at Made by Kath Craft and I'll tag her video down below so that after you've watched my video you can pop over and watch her video and just see what she's planning to make. And after me tomorrow Alex Judge Sews will be posting a video so do pop over and watch her video too. So I'm ashamed to say that I knew surprisingly little about the amount of free patterns and resources that there are out there online um, and there are so many bloggers around that have put together some really good lists um, of all the free patterns available online. Um, so Sustainability has put together an amazing blog post which lists lots and lots of free patterns that can be found online and it's really been an eye-opener for me. So I will list uh, in the description below of this video some of the resources that I've come across while I've been thinking about what I might be making for this challenge um, just so that you can pop over and have a look at those websites too because they might be of interest to you. Um, a couple that come to mind right now are Peppermint Magazine which you may have heard of. They have some amazing free patterns, some beautiful sort of dresses and summer patterns, shorts jumpsuits um, and tops uh, that are just free to download. I think you need to subscribe to their website in order to be able to download the patterns um, but there's so much sort of free information on their website it's worth subscribing anyway. There's also mood patterns online which I've come across and they have some sort of amazing uh, patterns on there, some quite vintage inspired patterns. So the rules of the challenge are just to recap again you need to pick one free dress pattern 
you need to pick a fabric from your stash that will go well with that dress pattern. And the idea is that on the 31st of March, we will all post a picture of our dresses over on Instagram, if you are taking part on Instagram, um, and we can all see what everyone else has been making and it should be a really fun day. So if you are taking part and you do want to reveal your dress, make sure that you use the hashtag and make sure that you tag Sam and Ruan in your image below so that they can see your dress as well. And the most exciting part of the challenge is that there's going to be lots of lovely prizes up for grabs, so well worth taking part if you want to. So I realise I'm sharing quite a lot of information here, so just to recap, I will link everything in the description of this video down below, all the rules of taking part, all the people that you need to tag, um, and of course the reveal date and the hashtag that you need to use. So don't worry if you can't keep up with everything I'm talking about, it will all be linked in the description below. It might be a good idea as well to start following that hashtag now because I think some people are planning to post some sneak peeks of what they're making up on Instagram. So if you're following the hashtag, you might be able to see some sneak peeks of what people are planning to make. So no one will be revealing their actual dress until the 31st of March, but it will be really fun to see all of those sneak peeks over on Instagram. So make sure you're following that hashtag as well, even before the 31st of March. So what am I planning to make for the challenge? Well, I'm not completely sure what I'm going to make yet. I've got a few ideas and I'm going to share with you now some free patterns that I've had in my stash for absolutely ages. And I would really like to get your opinions on them and I would love to hear what you think I should make. So I'm going to share some free patterns that I've had in my stash for a while and then I'm going to share some fabrics I've had that I've picked out from my stash that I think might go with these patterns. And as I say, please do comment below and let me know what you think I should make. So I probably like a lot of us by Love Sewing Magazine quite a lot. And with Love Sewing Magazine comes every month a free pattern. So I have quite a lot of free patterns from Love Sewing Magazine. And often they are really nice patterns, um, but I've not yet made many of them up. So I went through all of my patterns last night and just pulled out a few dress patterns that I had from Love Sewing Magazine. Uh, free with the magazine, so obviously there was some cost involved in purchasing the magazine initially. So these are the patterns that I've picked out and that I'm thinking of making as part of this challenge. The first dress pattern that I've had from Love Sewing Magazine that's been sat around for a while but I really like the look of is this one, it's the Evelyn dress. And I think this is really, really pretty. It's a 1940s inspired dress. It's like a tea dress um, with a lovely collar, kind of V-neck style dress, which buttons down into a fit and flare um, skirt. And I think this is so pretty and I don't know why I haven't actually had a go at making it up yet. Um, so that's the first one that I'm thinking of. It comes in a big range of sizes, sizes six to 20. Um, and it suggests that you use a medium to lightweight cotton, crepe, rayon, viscose or linen. Um, so I'm going to share with you some fabrics in a minute, some that I think might be suited to this dress and you can let me know what you think. But that one's the Evelyn dress. The next possibility I have is this one, another kind of vintage inspired dress. And this is the Libby dress and I really, really like this one too and I don't know why I haven't made this one up either. It's really good to go through all of my patterns actually and see what I've had. Um, kind of hanging around that I've not made yet. This one's really pretty. It has a really kind of sweet Peter Pan collar. Um, you can make it in a mini length um, on the front there. I think that's the mini length, but you can also make it as a midi length dress as well. But I think I'd probably go for the sort of mini knee length dress if I was to make this one. Um, the fabric suggestions are lightweight woven fabrics such as cotton, cotton lawn, crepe and viscose. So I do have a few of those kind of fabrics that I'm going to share with you in a minute um, and you can see if you think I should make this one. Another free pattern from Love Sewing Magazine is this one, it's the shirt dress um, and I really really like the look of this one and I think I actually bought the magazine at the time for this pattern and I've not yet made it up. So you can see um, probably more clearly if I just show you a close up of the line drawings down the side, the style of the dress so it can be made kind of mini or midi again. Um, and it's got some lovely kind of cuff detail, almost elbow length sleeves, I think, and then it buttons all the way down with a kind of fabric belt on it as well. So yeah, I really, really like the look of this. I love a shirt dress, as you probably know. Yeah, I do like that one as well. So let me know what you think of that one. So again, it says light to medium weight fabrics such as cotton, cotton on or rayon, and I do have a few of those in my stash, so I could probably make that one if I wanted to. I also have this really pretty rosa dress pattern 
Um, this is a really lovely pattern and it buttons down at the bodice there, really pretty kind of sundress. Um, it can kind of tie up at the straps there if you want to, or you can just have them plain. Um, but yeah, I think that would be a really, really pretty sundress to have in your wardrobe for summer. And the fabric suggestions for this one are light cotton, cotton lawn, crepe or rayon. Um, so that would be a suitable one as well and it would be really nice to have that for summer I think it's just a really pretty kind of casual summer dress. And lastly in my love sewing pattern collections I picked out the Ashleen dress I think that's how you pronounce that name um, and I really like this one I like the sleeves on it and the embroidery detail if you could make um, if you could make that work somehow it would be really really pretty for summer. So this one has an invisible zip down the back um, I hate doing invisible zips so I think that might put me off of this one a little bit um, but I do really like the style of this dress and it would be really good for spring actually with those long sleeves wouldn't it? Yeah it's quite boho inspired I think it's got some tassel details if you want to add them on the front um, and the fabric suggestions for that one are light to medium weight cottons, crepe, rayon, viscose or linen um, so yeah that's another option that I have let me know what you think so of course, while I was looking around online, I was kind of distracted by a couple of patterns that I really liked online as well, free patterns. I did initially think that I wanted to use one of those patterns from what I already had in my stash because I wouldn't need to print anything out or anything. Um, and it would have been really nice to use one of those. Uh, but there were also a couple of other dresses from Peppermint Magazine online that really caught my eye. And I'll just pop a picture of them in now. So the first one is the Peppermint Wrap Dress. And I really, really like the look of this one because um, it's just a simple kind of wrap over dress that buttons up at the bodice. Um, but the lovely thing about this is that it's reversible. So you just make, um, you make the dress up in two different fabrics basically and then you bias bind all around the edge of the fabrics and you can wear it either way around. And I really liked the idea of that, I thought it was really clever and it seems quite a simple dress to make. Um, and the good thing about it is as well that you only download the pattern for the bodice and then it gives you the measurements for the skirt pattern so you don't actually have to download a skirt pattern so there's not a lot of paper printage paper printage, is that a word? <laughs> um, there's not a lot of printing involved in that pattern. So I really like the idea of this dress. Um, I'm kind of swaying towards this one a little bit and I'll tell you why in a minute when I talk about my fabrics. Um, but that's the first one. Another one that caught my eye on Peppermint Magazine is this pleated summer dress pattern. And I thought this was really pretty as well, just as like a simple summer dress. I've not got a lot of pleated detailed dresses in my wardrobe but a lot of them are just gathered so I thought it would be nice to have a go at some pleats and it just looked really pretty and I thought it would maybe suit one of the fabrics I've got in my stash which I'm going to share with you now so those two are two online patterns that I've picked out that I really like so um, yes let me know what you think of those as well. So on to fabrics and fabrics that I think might suit some of these patterns. So I've shared before that I don't very often have a big stash of fabrics and when I was actually coming to pull out fabrics that I could use for this challenge I did struggle a little bit so I'm going to share with you some that I've got um, that I think would be suited to these dresses. There's not that many fabrics actually so I will be pairing the same um, fabric to some of the patterns I'm going to show you but even though I don't have a very big stash I still wanted to use something that I already had rather than buy something new because that would defeat the object of the challenge. So first up is this beautiful crane print cotton fabric which I've shared with you before um, so this was from Higgs and Higgs and I got it quite a while ago. I have three metres of this and I just think it's really beautiful. So originally I planned to make a vintage shirt dress from this but I don't think I'm going to be able to get a vintage shirt dress out of this because it's just not wide enough, it's quite narrow. Um, so I think this one would go really nicely. It would either make a really nice version of the Peppermint Magazine pleated sundress which I've just showed or I think it would actually look really nice as this dress maybe. But I don't know what you think about pattern matching. Let me know what you think. Would you pattern match at the back there? If you're gonna put an invisible zip in this dress with this print, would you pattern match at the back or would you not bother? Let me know because I'm quite lazy and I would probably tend not to bother, but um, I may regret that when I come to look at the end results. Let me know what you think. Would you pattern match if you're gonna put an invisible zip in this dress in this fabric? So that's option number one. I also think it would pair quite nicely with this um, rosa dress. 
But again, um, with the buttons at the front, I'm not quite sure with the pattern matching of the cranes there, would that work or would it be really difficult to do? I don't know. But I do think if it did work, that would make it a really pretty summer dress, wouldn't it? Um, so those are my options for that fabric. Another beautiful fabric I have is this um, embroidered border chambray fabric, uh, which was kindly gifted to me from Abercrom Fabrics as part of their new summer collection. I'll just show you the border print. Isn't that pretty? It's so lovely. And um, I actually think that this chambray fabric would be suited again to either of these patterns. Um, and I think if you were going to make um, this dress, you could maybe use some of the embroidery down the front there, as um, they've done in the pattern. And I think that would make a really, really nice spring dress. And it would also be a bit easier to work with than that crane fabric and all the pattern matching and things that would be involved in that. So that would be really well suited to that pattern, I think. And um, again, I think it would work really nicely as a rosa dress. So you could have the embroidered part of the fabric at the bottom of the skirt down there. You can also, there's the option to add a frill to the dress, which you can see from the line drawings there. So you could have sort of an embroidered frill at the bottom of the dress. Yeah, I think um, this chambray would look really nice as this dress too. So yeah, I'm really undecided at the moment. Let me know what you think. And then I have this shirt dress pattern, which I think would look really nice in this lovely sunflower print that I've had for quite a while from Stuff and Still. So yeah, this has got a really lovely um, bit of drape to it. And I think this would probably suit this shirt dress pattern really well. Um, I'm not a big fan of um, wearing anything too structured around my arms. So anything that's sort of cotton um, or you know quite weighty I don't really like to wear them as sleeves and I'm a bit weird like that so I feel like for me this would suit this shirt dress pattern really nicely if I was going to make that one up and um, it could possibly suit this Libby dress pattern but I think because of the sort of 40s 50s vibe of this dress maybe that would suit more of a ditzy floral rather than this um, I don't know maybe it would work and then having maybe a black collar or even a bright yellow collar would work nicely, a bit of a twist to that kind of vintage pattern. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. I'm feeling a bit more as if this needs to have a sort of pretty ditzy floral print like the pattern cover. Um, but yeah, what do you think? Do you think that would work or not? But I do love this pattern. I really want to make this at some point. And then of course there's the Evelyn dress, which I showed you earlier. And I think this would suit the Evelyn dress, probably a bit more than the Libby dress that I just showed you, because I think this maybe, this print would suit more of a quite kind of shirt dress style, um, and it would drape really nicely and it wouldn't be too structured. I don't think I would make this Evelyn dress out of a cotton, I think it would just be a bit too stiff for my liking, but I actually think it would look quite nice in this sunflower print. I also have another two viscoses um, in my stash, which I picked up a little while ago, again from Abercrom Fabrics. Um, I'm normally a florals girl. I normally am um, kind of attracted to florals. It's mainly what I buy, but now and again, kind of um, really different print catches my eye. And I really, really liked this tiger print. And this is on a viscose. Um, and you, I'll hold it up so that you can see that it has this amazing tiger print all over it. So yeah, I like this so much that I got it in both colourways. I got it in this sort of beigey cream colourway and also the alternate colourway which is black and cream. I'll just hold that up so you can see the colours. Um, but yeah, isn't that an amazing print? Very different for me but I really liked it so I thought I would pick that up. And because I've got both colourways of these, I thought this would make an amazing peppermint wrap dress. So the peppermint wrap dress, I'll just pop in the image again, um, it's reversible. So I could do one side of it in the black, and then I could do, say, the inside in the cream. And then I could reverse it and I could have the dress in both of these colourways. And I think that would actually be amazing. Um, so. You can probably tell that that's what I'm kind of veering mainly towards at the moment. I really like the idea of having a go at doing that. Um, but also, of course, these viscoses would probably make a really good twist on some of those vintage patterns that I showed you. So it would probably make an amazing Libby dress because um, it's just not what you'd expect at all to be used in that pattern. I mean, even I was saying earlier that I think it needs a ditzy floral, but wouldn't it be probably amazing in this tiger print? 
maybe I'm just going a bit mad, I don't know, let me know what you think. <laughs> um, but I think sometimes when you kind of do the opposite to what you're expecting in a pattern, so if you've got a really vintagey pattern and then you've got a really kind of vibrant out there print, sometimes it really works, sometimes it doesn't. Let me know what you think. This um, tiger print would also probably be suited to the Evelyn dress or the shirt dress. Um, you'd probably make a really nice shirt dress as well. It's a little bit see-through if you really hold it up to the light, so it might want a bit of lining if you do just use that on its own. But obviously, if I used it for the reversible peppermint wrap dress, then that would be fine as it is because you're using two layers of fabric anyway. So those are my options. I didn't feel like I had a lot to share with you. I didn't have many patterns to share and I didn't have um, too many fabrics to share either because my stash has really been narrowed down lately. As I say, I don't keep a lot of fabrics anyway. And when I do buy fabric, I tend to have a solid idea in mind of what I'm gonna use that fabric for. So this was a little bit difficult for me and I had to sort of be creative in what I was thinking about using these fabrics for and how I might use them with these patterns that I've had in my stash for a while. So let me know what you think out of my little collection there. Which one do you think I should make? I'm really excited to get sewing on this. Obviously we're already in March, so I'm gonna to have to get going on this quite quickly really. So I think I'm gonna leave it a few days, see what you all think. Um, and uh, yeah, then I'll probably get sewing on this probably beginning of next week, maybe. But I'm so excited to see what everyone else is going to be making and what everyone's going to be revealing on the 31st of March. I think it's going to be a really fun day. Don't forget, if you would like to take part, make sure you're following that hashtag. Um, I will list it all down below in the description. Um, and don't forget to pop over and watch some of the other videos that the other sewing bloggers have been making. So I'll leave the video here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to click the notification bell so that you don't miss my big reveal date because I will be sharing um, this dress not only on Instagram, I will share it on YouTube as well so don't worry if you aren't on Instagram, I'll definitely be sharing my finished dress um, in a makes video or something somewhere along the line. Um, thanks so much for watching everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!